With art, there's lots of problems about beauty, but with people, it's not such a problem. Everyone knows pretty quickly if they find a person beautiful or not. Some people actually have the job to be beautiful people. They're stars. Everyone loves them. They're glamorous and polished and perfect and unreal. And sometimes, they're art. <laughs> This is the art of Elizabeth Payton. It doesn't seem like modern art. It's beautiful in the way we say a fashion design is beautiful. She paints stars. Sometimes it's just her friends. Mostly it's the famous or the mega famous. She's already a big star herself, an art star. She answers a recent appetite for roots art. Not brainy or ironic, just nice and a bit sincere. She does angelic beauty, sweet, feminine, like her version of Britpop's most famous brothers as infants. But even when they're not children anymore, she takes the grungy realism out of her beautiful stars and leaves them just starry and pretty. There's like loads of glamorous beauties out there and that's not the sort of beauty I'm interested in. I mean, more the beauty I'm interested in is the kind that comes from being really willful and talented and making beautiful things and I think that gives your person a kind of very special beauty and some of those people happen to be famous. When the o Oasis was huge, every week in NME you'd get male writers talking about how pretty Liam was, like Liam came down the elevator in the hotel and the doors opened and it was like, you know, men getting their breath taken away by him. So it wasn't just me that was thinking he was very pretty. I think if a portrait seems to come from a Matisse world of art, but if another portrait seems to come from a pop world of art, there's a natural tendency to think that the pop world is less interesting and therefore that portrait has less importance. It's probably only because the pop world is so new. Like there was one um, painter, Gro, G-R-O-S, and he devoted himself to Napoleon and when Napoleon lost power he killed himself. So that's really the work of a fan? Well, I wouldn't call it a fan. He was, you know, taking down history, but he was also in love with him. I mean, I, I think about history painting a lot and religious paintings a lot. Like, there was a painting of Noel that I did of him coming through Heathrow when the band supposedly broke up. And there's just so much press coming in, or this picture of Ronaldo um, when he came back to Brazil. And just the crush of him, all these people looking at him, it's just such a historical moment and such a personal moment. If a newspaper editor, editor got that on the desk, I think, yes, that is the photo. But for an artist, what, are you thinking like a newspaper editor, or do you think there's something there for an artist? Well, I mean, I was thinking, wow, Ronaldo's just had his panic attack. Maybe his girlfriend was poking the TV journalist, maybe not, who knows what happened, but he had a huge anxiety attack, and he lost the game, and he played horribly. And um, he's this great player, and he's 21, and he's coming back to Brazil, and he's right off the airplane, and, I mean, what a moment that must have been for him. Yeah. And I love his Brazil jacket. Oh, right. Their outfits are so great. Yeah. And is this, is this from that? Yeah. Can I pick it up? It's looking really bad right now. Oh, well, uh, I'll show you, doesn't it? It looks great. Mm -hmm. It looks like a, a painting that's... It looks really alive, actually. But are you what you're worried about? What's going to happen up there? Oh no, happen? I like that part. I like right. the mess there. <laughs> what don't you like? It's just the color of his skin right now. It's looking a little plastic. It's not right. really glowing yet. You've made him much more fawn-like and sort of elfin and like Nijinsky or something. Okay. I mean, he is beautiful, but he's got a much more sort of masculine, rugged look. And you've sort of thinned him out a lot and made more sort of pretty mouth. You know? which is a kind of process that they all seem to go through. <laughs> Beauty isn't stronger than fashion. Artists can be the height of fashion, then they can be completely out. Peyton's post-pop beauty is in, at least for now.
There can't be many sights in the world more beautiful than what I'm seeing now. A beautiful lake, beautiful trees, beautiful skies. Nice houses with elegant, untroubled people enjoying themselves on a sun deck with beautiful light flooding down on them. What place is there for modern art here where everything seems so okay? Alex Katz. He's been in and out of fashion since the 50s. He was in in the 60s because his pictures looked a bit pop. Now he's in because they look a bit Liz Payton. Beautiful, elegant, bland. I think there's a, an unconscious idea that modern art is really about beautiful ideas or sublime ideas or big thoughts. To paint people who are beautiful or trees which are beautiful or landscapes which are beautiful. It's rather an odd thing for a modern artist to be doing. Oh, I think so. Uh, I think um, uh, particularly in figurative art, which is generally meant, meant to serve some social function rather than a more optical one, I wanted to make an art that was elegant. The idea of beauty seemed like a great vehicle for the kind of elegant painting I was looking for. Beauty is usually associated with something that's kind of soft. With secondary 19th-century second, second, yeah, French artists. Bad, who, bad art. But, and they were going to be defeated by rugged Impressionism. Yeah, yeah. I, I was thinking of uh, my, my point. Beauty was, for me, was like Nefertiti. Yeah. And Nefertiti is absolutely first class. And I was trying to make something elegant to make a, a painting that would uh, really hold up to a, a, a muscular, abstract expressionist painting. Impressionist paintings at, at Matisse and Picasso all work with kind of a slower light. I like the quick light of uh, de Kooning and I like the quick light of Sargent. And what, what do you mean exactly by quick light? Well, when you look at the paintings, they go pop real quick. You want something that has the impact of a sign? Yeah, yeah I want it like a sign. I want it to come off that canvas and just knock you out. And now the large paintings I'm doing, these landscapes, are um, uh, an attempt to, to blow up some of these things like 20 minute sensations. A sunset. You have from 7.30 to 7.45 to do the painting. And then you try it again the next night. And then I try to paint the big painting that has that sensation, that high-speed sensation. from some piers in the ocean. The water's all in motion. It's incredibly uh, rich, the, the sort of flatness of that and the depth of it, that you could, you could feel like you could go into it. Well, it's just making this pattern all over Water the is one of those... Um, water is, is similar to flowers. It's in, uh, on, on, on one level, it's... Uh, See how you have very few people who paint flowers well or paint water well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and with water, you have reflection, you have depth, and you have motion, and you have weight. And that's what I'm trying to do. Listening to the lulling sound of cats talking, and with all this beautiful light flooding down, it's like the early evening cocktails kicking in. It's easy to forget like, these paintings uh, are feats of here. technical brilliance, like Japanese prints. Each one is completed in a day to get exactly the right precise split-second image in all its ordinary niceness. It only works at all if it works in an instant, in a pop. These ordinary faces, the weird reality that Katz's 14-feet-high ideal reality oil paintings are based on.